These folks were so creative, so innovative, so full of talent and spirit, and they wanted to change the world. They wanted to make sure that our children were able to succeed in school. And so when you saw this group, it just blew your mind. IDRA has been so involved in community education, uh, trying to get students and parents, especially poor, low-income, monolingual Spanish parents and families involved in the education process. The school finance case made the greatest improvement in the history of Texas school finance uh, in terms of giving poor districts, districts with poor and minority students, more funds and equalized funds. Wealthy districts could afford to, to basically steal good teachers. Poor school districts would educate people, uh, teach them how to be good teachers, especially in bilingual education. And wealthier districts would offer them more money and take them away. And so that's the sort of effect of education that I did not know, uh, but Jose taught us. My name is Laura Tobin Cardenas. I was married to Jose Cardenas, the founder of T slash IDRA. The importance of research is paramount, and that is what drives and has driven IDRA. They've done research on the dropout rate, for instance. Every year they put out a report on the dropout rates of every school district in the state of Texas. If you look at so many of the big battles around public education and making sure that everybody has access to it, that it's fair and equal in Texas and really throughout the South, uh, IDRA prepared so many lawmakers and litigators and others, academics, uh, with the facts that they needed, the arguments they needed, to make sure they could make the case that education should be uh, fair and equal for everyone. If you want to get better results in, in anything in a community, you really have to organize people, especially people who have not always had entrance into the mainstream or into those school districts where uh, at some points in time, parents were not welcome necessarily. One of the very first um, you know, projects that we work on uh, as a community was as, as a group, our parent leader was our community PTAs. And so one of the things then from there, we moved to the, the, the cafes group. And so the number one reason why we created a group of these uh, of parents uh, to work with education and to learn about, again, requirements or, or the process was because either believes that every parent is able and has the ability to be able to advocate, uh, not just for their child, but for the whole community. The Valued Youth Program was very successful here in the States. The youth tutoring youth was a huge jump for those kids. It is life changing. It changes the lives of kids who need to feel that they are valued, that they are of value in their environments. Being a valued youth tutor was exciting. It helped me work with the kids. It also helped me help them get the help that I never received when I was a kid. Before being in VYP, I didn't know what I wanted to do after high school. But now I am clear that I want to be a speech therapist. My favorite part of being in VYP was definitely seeing the little faces light up whenever I walked through the door. But it was also showing them how to learn something that they were struggling with that I've already learned myself. IDRA has really revolutionized the way legal work is done in the advocacy space. Uh, the organization has five attorneys on staff at this point, and yes, IDRA files amicus briefs and civil rights complaints on the behalf of students and families, but also, maybe more importantly, works very closely with families and students to craft and co-create legislation to address the challenges to education in the classroom, whether it's legislation that fights back against anti-LGBT hate or race-based bullying in the classroom. IDRA has done a remarkable job of responding to the needs of students and families, even in some of the most unprecedented moments in our country's history. Pandemic was a great example of this. Within a few weeks of the shutdown, IDRA was training teachers in the virtual space, providing resources to families and students, and even delivering bilingual books to students who didn't have access to the internet so they could keep learning. Uh, I don't know very many organizations that have both uh, the capacity for rigorous policy analysis on the one hand 
and strong organizing and advocacy chops on the other. It's the blend of those two things uh, that I think stands IDRA apart. Where do I see IDRA in 50 years? I hope they continue this positive, meaningful, valuable work that is so important to the future of our country, the education of our children. So to continue with their research, with their training, with their advocacy, the legal positions that they take in supporting these disenfranchised children. Jose would have been proud of what IDRA has become and what they continue to do the work and the vision that he had for IDRA 50 years ago.